What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So the other day, a report dropped that certainly had people pretty concerned around the looming digital future that we're heading towards as it seemed like Target was looking to exit the physical media business. Well, we now have a response from them and we'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Fallout and really the effect that the new series has had on game sales as we have some initial sales charts from that and even an announcement for season two of the series. And then we're also gonna be taking a look at Microsoft seemingly taking over the PlayStation Store, at least recently, with some of those top selling games. So, if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps it a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get Newswave early and ad free. If you would like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're going to start today with that Delta emulator once again, that of course now officially released on these different Apple products your iPad, iPhone, your Apple Vision Pro, which is something that people have been sharing online videos and images of them playing these games on the 3000 some odd dollar headset which is really funny to, to think about you bought this headset for 3000 or so dollars and now you can finally play original Nintendo games on it well like you can see this for example that was posted up by upload VR the Delta emulator brings game uh, Nintendo's Game Boy DS NES Super Nintendo 64 to Apple Vision Pro and I mean, it, sure, if you already have the headset, that's that's pretty cool just to see. I, you kind of put the displays wherever you want in your room, and you can walk up and start playing a Nintendo 64 game or, or something. I mean, I wouldn't buy the headset for this specifically, but it's the whole point of this being available through official means is, yeah, all these different Apple products can now play these different games without having to sideload, jailbreak, that sort of thing. And you do see the effect currently where... I mean, everyone, a lot of people online, I'll say, were posting up images of them playing DS games, Game Boy Advance games, N64 games on their iPhone. So people seem to be getting a kick out of it, and I feel like many more emulators are going to be coming up here pretty soon. Also, we did have Octopath Traveler just sort of disappear from the eShop for a time. Well, we can see this is posted up by Square Enix over on X, saying Octopath Traveler is now available to purchase on Nintendo Switch eShop once again. Thank you for your patience. So, okay, it's down for a few weeks, really. And uh, it seemed to be something with Square Enix being the publisher now, whereas before it was Nintendo. I, there was something that, I guess, happened behind the scenes with business dealings. I don't, I don't know if it was already planned out that way. Is like, okay, eventually this will expire and it'll then revert back to us. Or Square Enix just outright bought it back. I, I have no idea. But either way, it was gone for a while as they sorted out all the paperwork and filings and now it's back up, which is just good news. Obviously, Octopath Traveler 2 has been praised heavily, but the first one, I mean, really, it's what set the stage for sort of that HD 2D look and really caught a lot of people's eye with it, especially early on in the Switch's life. It's just a really cool RPG that harkens back more to some of the, the traditional gameplay and feeling of the older uh, RPGs from way back in the day, but still awesome title. Good to see it back up on the eShop available for purchase again. Oh, and we do have Paper Mario Thousand Year Door on the Switch coming out in about six weeks. And it appears we now know more information around preview timing and review timing. This was posted up over on X by Tom Henderson who just simply says Paper Mario previews April 25th. So next week we should get a flood of information around this game. And then reviews May 21st. I feel like after the previews come out, we're probably going to see Nintendo go into a pretty serious push for marketing over the course of three to four weeks. The review, though, coming out, what, two days before the game? That seems pretty standard and even obvious, I, I would say. And look, it, we already know what kind of game it is. You can play it now technically on a GameCube or on through emulation and stuff. But I am very interested to see if Nintendo adds anything extra to it because that could be a major deciding factor for some, although others... It's Thousand Year Door. They've been asking for it for so long. It'd almost be weird if they didn't buy it. And something tells me Nintendo already knows that and is in some way counting on it. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with physical media in stores that seems to be moving more and more towards just disappearing outright. We, of course, heard about Best Buy, and that was an initial shock because it sounded like at first they were just removing all physical media. So movies... Any, anything with TV shows, games, but it appears that they were doing a bit of a smaller correction and more or less reorganizing and yes, shrinking down a lot of their sections for DVDs, Blu-rays, and that sort of thing, because 
I, I just, I think they see it in the numbers. And I think many people even realize that this the streaming movies in general has really done a number on some of those sections and I'm sure revenue numbers. But now we have this, which was posted up. This from president of physical media saying, target sources are telling me they reportedly will stop selling physical media in store and online by 2025. And this, I mean, this sparked a lot of interest online. It was almost 2 million impressions on this on this post alone and people were quote tweeting it talking about well it's it's not a surprise my target doesn't really have much out anymore and when they i go in there and they do it's all disorganized it just doesn't seem like they care much and you know i thought about it i've been a target a few times recently but it's not my usual go-to spot to pick up physical games at this time i guess it's still technically either walmart or Best Buy, even GameStop's been a bit, a bit sketchy where a game comes out, day one, I go in to pick it up and they just don't have it. So you basically have to pre-order it there or you're just maybe, you're probably not going to get it. But Best Buy has been still okay for me. However, Walmart still kind of looking a little sketchy too. But Target, I will admit, whenever I went in there, it seemed like they were just missing games constantly from the shelf and it looked very sparse. So this wouldn't surprise me, but IGN did get a response from Target. We can see this over on their website with the spokesperson saying, based on our guest shop or guest shopping patterns and broader industry trends, we're transitioning the limited assortment of DVDs we carry in our stores to Target.com, where guests will continue to find thousands of titles. Moving forward, we'll offer select DVDs in stores when they are newly released or during key times throughout the year when they are more popular, like for gift giving during the holidays. The spokesperson also confirmed that its new policy will not impact physical games sold in its retail stores. This will only impact the physical copies of movies and TV shows. It's interesting they mentioned specifically DVDs. I, I'm not really sure. I guess I guess Blu-rays would also fall in line with movies and TV shows. And again, it's not shocking since the subscription craze that's been pushed for places like Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Hulu. Uh, there's so many of them. Yeah, if you have one of those, there's a good chance you're probably just going to look through it to see if it's there. And then you're not going to go out and buy the like the the full season set of Seinfeld or something. You just okay, where where can I watch this? Great, it's here. I'll just I'll just go that route, right? So again, not shocking, but it is something to keep in mind. As we have heard Phil Spencer, for example, talk about suppliers for Blu-ray drives are actually becoming harder and harder to find for their consoles because it appears that Blu-rays and DVDs are sort of on the out now. They have to look towards other things to manufacture because along with Blu-rays and DVDs not selling as much, well, the Blu-ray players are also not going to sell as frequently as they did five, six, seven years ago. So to me, I really see this news as another domino sort of falling over as we get closer and closer towards just being 100% digital. And retailers will play a role in this entire thing because if eventually they just stop carrying games, what are you really going to do if you're Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft? You'll just sell them online and you won't have obviously the, the reach that you would have if you had them physically in stores. It's just at that point, you may as well go all digital yourself because you're going to be producing less and less copies of these games physically to where logistics wise, it might not make sense for the, the cost. So something to keep an eye on as we go through 2024 to see if maybe Walmart mentions something like this but at this time Best Buy Target are really kind of shrinking down their their movies and TV show section we'll see if it really makes its way to games anytime soon next up let's talk about Fallout as of course the series has absolutely exploded online I did complete the series is the eight episodes and it was very very good definitely better than I was expecting so much so that I started looking around at the Fallout games again. I know Fallout 4 is getting that free update here pretty soon. And I, I decided I am going to go back to it and at least play it for a few hours to check out the update and see if maybe I can get back into that game. But I also downloaded Fallout 76 and people keep telling me it's gotten a lot better. But I, I realized, wow, the series had that sort of an effect even on me. I wonder what kind of effect that has on maybe the, the mainstream who's learning about Fallout for the first time. Well, we can see this over on gamesindustry.biz with the European weekly top 10 that's digital and physical. Look at the number one position. It's Fallout 4. 
Wow, I did not expect that in 2024 to see Fallout 4 jump to the top of the sales charts, actually beating out Helldivers 2 even, but here we are. Let's see what else we have on the list. Then we have Helldivers 2, EA Sports, FC24, Grand Theft Auto 5, of course, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, Hogwarts Legacy, Fallout 76, and get this, Fallout New Vegas, and then rounding out the top 10 with Fallout 3. In fact, Fallout 4 sales jumped over 7,500. That's right, 7,500% week over week across Europe. That is incredibly impressive, especially when you think about the fact that Fallout 4 is available on Game Pass, obviously. I feel like it's also available on PlayStation Plus. This just tracks people who are buying the game. So technically they could have downloaded it on either service, but opted just to pick it up. And technically the same would go for something like New Vegas that is on Xbox. And these are all boosted up to 60 frames per second and stuff. So they're very, very good experiences on the Xbox at this time. And eventually we'll see Fallout 4, of course, get this big update that'll have the PS5 version even uh, actually looking and running really well. But it's, it's impressive that if you have a series that really catches on and people are into it, that it can really propel these game sales this much. And now it does turn out the series will continue. This was posted up by Prime Video saying Fallout will be back for season two. Again, a lot of conversation around this. And I mean, if you if you watch the eight episodes, you get to the end, it has to go to season two. And of course there's a cliffhanger. You have to figure there is since they would want to do season two, but also keep people engaged and talking about the series, which also brings up something else. And I wanna see what people think about this one. In fact, maybe I'll make it a poll at some point. Would you prefer for something like this, let's say the next Fallout season two, right? When they put it out there, would you prefer it to release weekly? So there's eight weeks, we'll say, eight episodes over the course of eight weeks. Or do you like the idea of it just dropping everything all at once and you can just binge watch through all the episodes? I had to think about it a bit. I don't mind them just dropping all the episodes, but I do see the appeal for people of it releasing week to week so everyone's on the same page and you can have kind of discussions and okay, what's gonna happen next? And I noticed these little details in the episode I might not have before because I would've just pushed through to the next one. Ah, just something to think about there. Let me know how you prefer these different series to be released though, all at once so you can binge it or week to week so you can take your time with everyone else. Next up, let's talk about Microsoft apparently taking over the PlayStation Store. At least that's what it looks like when you check out Sony's top selling games on the PlayStation 5 and I guess technically the PlayStation 4 as well. It's, that's still relevant. They're still pushing that along. But this we can see over on Tweaktown as they made charts to showcase this a bit more visually. And they also went down the list of different games that are placing here. And as you figure, Call of Duty would be at the top along with Fortnite, sure. So you have uh, Xbox, Microsoft, Activision there at the number two slot. And then below that, NBA 2K24, MLB The Show 24, so there's PlayStation, Madden 24, Helldivers 2, it's PlayStation again. Then Overwatch 2, technically that's Xbox. From there, we drop all the way down to the 12th spot with Sea of Thieves, then Destiny 2, Fallout 4, dropping down to Minecraft, Fallout 76, and Grounded, which means yeah, Microsoft has seven games as opposed to Sony who has five games in there. So yeah, Microsoft has the majority of games then technically out of these different companies in the top 25 titles at this time on PlayStation. Now it's important to note some games on there that like Fortnite, for example, free to play. Obviously a lot of people are downloading and playing that. And that's where a lot of people's time is going. Uh, so you put that next to other games that aren't free to play and it's, it's not necessarily gonna match up one to one in terms of just point of sale revenue. But still, this is, uh, it's interesting to consider where we are now versus a year or so ago. We're talking about Microsoft selling this many games just outright on the PlayStation store and doing pretty well. now. It's also worth noting that you see Fallout games up there because of this series. So I feel like the stats will shift pretty quickly, maybe in a week or two, and it won't be like this. And this is more or less a snapshot in time, but it's also something to consider the way that Microsoft may be viewing this. And it's like, whoa, this is working. Sea of Thieves, of course, has now topped 40 million players. 
how many more are they going to find on PlayStation? And what will that do to their bottom line? And should they consider more multiplayer games going over to PlayStation even day one? Just like, hey, we have this new game coming out. It's it's full live service. It's going to be on Xbox, PC, and it's going to be on PlayStation 5. You know, if we can get on Nintendo's next system, it's there too. I kind of feel like that is Microsoft's mindset right now and why they've only mentioned four titles that are going to PlayStation or just exploring PlayStation and Switch and stuff. I feel like it will continue to build from there because this could be a legitimate strategy for Microsoft, especially when it comes time to start reporting some of their revenue figures over the course of the year. You're probably gonna have shareholders also pressuring them to continue this and I think they will. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new game announcement that was made official yesterday and that's Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which was completely expected as they gave us essentially a week's heads up that they would make the announcement. Anyway, we can see some of the trailer here and we'll go over some of the details quickly. Now the game is coming out 2024, so I'm anticipating then probably uh, what, towards the holiday season, but they did say it's twice as big as the first game. There is a reputation system. It's built on the CryEngine. There will be, of course, first person combat as expected, but they also have it in horseback. There's going to be full stealth. There's new ranged weapons in the game. You can customize your appearance, your equipment. It's coming to the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, S, and PC. And unfortunately, I really didn't get into Kingdom Come Deliverance at all. It just kind of flew under the radar for me, but people who did like the first one were genuinely excited online to see this. Like, visually speaking, I thought it looked pretty good. The combat was fine. I, I assume I have to go back and play the first one to then play the second one because it seems like they're continuing to the story from there. And let me know if it's a game definitely worth going back and checking out because I have seen it at times. It's been on sale. I feel like it's been on like a PlayStation Plus or an Xbox Game Pass service at some time. So if I get some time, maybe I'll check it out. But something tells me in the next month or two, we're going to start hearing about a ton of games around that summer Game Fest, Nintendo event, Sony event, Microsoft event. So I might get overwhelmed once again, but we'll see. And before we go to the comment of the day, where I take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, which of these Fallout games is your favorite? Okay, Fallout New Vegas was number one, and I figured it would be. Typically gets the most praise online in the entire series. But then Fallout 4 just beat Fallout 3 by 1%. And, you know, it's it's funny. I understand New Vegas because I, I play New Vegas and I see it. I Trust me. It, out of the games here, that's probably the one I'd be most interested going back to playing if there wasn't, say, an update coming for Fallout 4. But Fallout 3, I, I maybe it's because it was the, the first Fallout I really played. I just didn't play the first one or the second one, the isometric view. But 3... Man, when that came out on the 360, it was something else. It really was. It Maybe it has that, like, first mover kind of effect where it's like, wow, this is incredible. It's just, I know it was Bethesda. Still felt kind of janky like we've had with some of their other titles where there's, like, Morrowind or Oblivion and stuff. But, I don't know, something about Fallout 3 when you walk out into the wasteland from the vault, it was just this really, really cool experience that still sticks with me to this day. So, maybe that's why I look at this list and go... I think Fallout 3 is probably my favorite one, but trust me, I get it with New Vegas, and I'll be revisiting Fallout 4 here pretty soon and seeing how that one holds up, but let me know which Fallout game is your favorite down below in the comments. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day, as you're seeing here. This is from 8 Boss saying, I wonder if that Sea of Thieves number includes people like me who literally played for about 10 minutes and noped out of it. Oh, it absolutely does. If you log in for just a few minutes and barely play, they're still gonna count you as a player, and that's why people... Look at those numbers a bit sideways when you see like 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. They go, okay, well, how many people bought the game? But in this case, Microsoft's just doing everything they can for monthly active users. And if Sea of Thieves can keep people engaged, like just at all from the subscription service with Game Pass especially, or just on Xbox or PC, that's enough for Microsoft. And yes, they can walk around flaunting these big numbers that doesn't necessarily line up with the amount of people who are playing at that time. But if they got you to download or access it through the cloud, technically they're okay with that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's Target moving away from movies and TV shows on DVD and Blu-ray? Let me know how your the section at your local Target looks for games and electronics and stuff. And then also, what about Fallout? I mean, just exploding in terms of sales. Did you like the series? If you had a chance, of course, to go through all eight episodes and Microsoft making some moves over on the PlayStation Store. Do you think this is something, a start of something bigger going forward outside of just these 
four initial releases. Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 Eastern time for Newswave.